Greetings. My name is Hawk Robinson. I am a student at Eastern Washington University working on an interdisciplinary degree in recreation therapy, music, neuroscience, and research psychology. This video was created in relation to a course assignment for the Psychology of Adjustment class taught by Professor Paul Spurgeon. I am registered with the Washington State Department of Health as a recreational therapist and working toward the Therapeutic Recreation and Music Therapy National Certifications, the CTRS and the AMTA. First, some very short definitions in my own words. Attention is the degree to which an entity is able to process sensory stimuli, motor functions, or cognitions. Concentration is the degree to which an entity focuses upon a task and excludes irrelevant stimuli or cognitions. Immersion is the degree to which a participant's concentration leads to being engrossed in an activity. And flow state is an optimal state of immersion that can lead to maximal performance by the participant. The Hungarian psychologist Mihai Csikszentmihalyi is perhaps best known for the concept of flow. In 1975, he defined flow as, quote, the holistic sensation present when we act with total involvement, end quote. Flow shares some distinctive features with what Maslow has called peak experiences. The textbook, Psychology of Adjustment, The Search for Meaningful Balance, on page 218 states about flow that flow is the state of being in which a person performing an activity is fully immersed in what is happening. It is characterized by a feeling of energized focus, full involvement, and enjoyment in the process. Furthermore, activities that are characterized by flow state should involve continuous learning where one always feels challenged to learn more. Thus, the true hallmark of flow is a feeling of spontaneous delight and complete absorption. This flow state can be experienced in sports, outdoors recreation, music, religious experiences, various hobbies, video games, tabletop games, live action games, and even in the workplace. Many sports aficionados call it being in the zone. Here is a brief clip from basketball player Kobe Bryant, a pupil of Michael Jordan, about this concept. When you get in that zone, it's just a supreme confidence that you know it's going in. It's not a matter of if or this, that. It's going in. According to Gene Nakamura and Csikszentmihalyi, there are six key factors leading to a flow experience. Number one. Focused concentration in the moment to an intense degree. Here's another short clip from Kobe Bryant about this concept. They get in the zone, you just kind of stay there. You, know, you don't you become oblivious to everything that's going on. You know, you don't you don't think about the surroundings or you know, what's going on with the crowd or the team. Number two, merging of action and awareness. Here is a third clip from Kobe Bryant on this concept. Everything becomes one noise. You know, it's not, you don't hear this or that. Everything's just one noise. And we're not paying attention to one or the other. We just, we just stay right there. Have to really try to stay in the present. Not, you know, not let anything break that rhythm. Number three, reflective self-consciousness is suspended. Here's a clip from Zombie Orpheus Entertainment's The Gamer's Darkness Rising, illustrating this concept. Number four, a strong sense of internal locus of control. Here's another clip from the same gamers movie illustrating this concept. The goblins surround Daphne. Joanna? Hold my action. Cass? Move to assist Daphne. Twice. I'm here to protect you. My hero. <laughs> <laughs> Number five, 
significant alteration of the experience of time. Here's another clip from the Gamers movie illustrating this concept with a tabletop role-playing game. And uh, I think we'll call it there for the night. What? It's still early. It's after two. It's what? I had no idea it was so late. See? See what happens? You get so into it, you can't help but lose track of time. Number six. Autotelic experience, a.k.a. strong, intrinsically rewarding experience. Csikszentmihalyi described an autotelic activity as an activity rewarding in and of itself, quite apart from its end product or any extrinsic good that might result from the activity. From Greek, autos equals self and telos equals goal. Though research indicates that role-playing games, RPGs, appear to provide many potential benefits to participants, they provide an exceptional opportunity for interested participants to enjoy an autotelic activity with the possibility of a significant flow state experience, whether alone or participating in groups. Here's another clip from the gamer's Dorcas Rising illustrating this concept. Cool. So I... I guess that means the campaign's over, doesn't it? This one is, yeah. I had a good time. Me too. That was different. But cool. Mostly cool. I like the way you game. Totally in agreement here. These six factors can happen to varying degrees by themselves, but for a true flow experience according to the theory, all six factors should be experienced simultaneously, to some degree. There are also three conditions in flow theory that are required to improve the likelihood of this optimal experience, and role-playing games are ideally suited to meet these requirements. Number one, the activity provides a clear set of goals and measures of progress, helping to provide structure and direction to the participants. Most RPGs do this very clearly as part of the entire activity. They provide rule books with clearly defined rules, clear mechanisms to determine success or failure, character sheets for tracking progress, maps, etc. Two, clear and immediate feedback so that the participants can adjust their actions as needed to optimize their chances of performance success. RPG game system rules and play etiquette generally provide this throughout the activity. Number three, Balance between perceived challenge level and the participant's perception of their own skill level with confidence that though challenging, they can succeed. This can be tricky in role-playing games for game masters to find the right balance, since different players may be at different levels of ability. But when a gaming group is performing well, see video number two on group dynamics of RPG, then a variety of skill mastery and good group performance can allow this to happen for all participants. Being out of balance could lead to a total party kill, TPK, or board players overcoming the adventure challenges too easily. Looking at this diagram, arguably the most important consideration for achieving a flow experience is hitting the sweet spot of an ideal balance between the maximal challenge level of the activity appropriate to the participant's skill level. Too much challenge and or too low a skill level will likely lead to much anxiety while too low a challenge for the skill level could lead to boredom. Role-playing games, when all the variables are properly aligned, may be able to provide some of the more readily accessible and intense experiences of flow state. And this experience may, under the right circumstances, be simultaneously shared by the entire group, not just one individual. To extent Mihai said about games, in games, the rules define what the relevant stimuli are and exclude everything else as irrelevant. To summarize, the key to maximizing the potential of optimal performance through increased likelihood of flow experience is to balance, among other variables, participant abilities and intrinsic motivations with challenge level and environment variables so that the participant has an intense, distinctive experience leading them to perform at their maximum capacity. For more information, see the RPG Research Project at www.rpgresearch.com.